18 cores, 36 threads for $200. This is the E5 2699V3. You can get these from AliExpress for that bargain basement price. Now you're probably wondering, what is the catch? Why are these CPUs so cheap? And the truth to that question is, we're gonna do a build today and find out. Where this CPU and the X99 platform were released seven years ago. And in fact, they were the first platform to be released to support the memory known as DDR4 to retail customers. That's guys like you and me. But the kicker is this CPU was released at the time for over $4,000. And some benefits that this CPU carries that no other CPUs carry in even in today's standards is that it's got 35 megabytes of level three cache and also 45 megabytes of cache in total. And this memory is very expensive memory, even by today's standards. And the speeds that this memory can push on this CPU is very good, even compared to today's CPUs. However, the icing on the cake for this CPU is that it's 18 cores, 36 threads of ring bus goodness. That is, these are some of the lowest latency CPU cores you can get in the market. However, enough talk, let's get on with today's used PC build surrounding this CPU, where I'm actually gonna do this in two parts. Part one's just going to be the build, the performance numbers out of the box, and then part two, we're gonna look at tuning this rig to get the most performance possible. Let's get on with it. Are you tired of seeing this Windows 10 needs activation message and just want a reliable key that's going to work forever? Well, in today's video sponsor has you covered. For as little as $14 using the coupon code BFTYC, you can get Windows 10 and even Windows 11 activated today. Links in the description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. And if you're getting a $200 18 core CPU, you're probably thinking, okay, I want to get the best value out of the rest of my system. And here is where this CPU shines yet again, where with an X99 motherboard, you can utilize ECC registered DDR4 memory. Now I picked up 64 gigabytes, four 16 gigabyte sticks from a contact I know who sometimes gets some recycled PCs. Now they literally gave me this stuff in the past and I've been saving it for, you guessed it, hopefully a future build. And here's where it comes into play perfectly. Now I'm not entirely sure if this will work with all X99 motherboards out there, but I do know it will definitely work with the Zeus motherboards and also the Jingsha and Machinist motherboards on AliExpress. But we'll talk more on that later, especially in relation to the AliExpress motherboards and this 18 core CPU. However, the rest of the build, we've got a GTX 1080 Ti. This is a great used GPU that still gives you amazing performance. And if you wanna to make today's computer not just a gaming PC, but also a workstation for even 4K video editing, then this GPU with 11 gigabytes of VRAM is definitely going to provide the goods. Now with the power supply, I picked this up in a used parts hunt along with the motherboard, which I'll put the link to that video up here. But we've also got on top of that a four terabyte hard drive which I got for 30 Aussie dollars and a one terabyte M.2, which is the only new component in today's build where that set me back 130 Aussie dollars. Now, the reason why this is the only new part is because if you're video editing at 4K, you will want a solid SSD to do the job because this does get taxed the most out of any component in a video editing PC. Though the final piece in today's puzzle is a $10 case that I picked up on another used parts hunt, and this is from 2005. This is one of those old school cases with temperature sensors, as well as a front LCD panel, and I'm not entirely sure if the whole build will fit in this case, but I'm going to give it a go, since I really do like the side panel, the fact that it's got a 20 centimeter fan. So let's get this show on the road and see what we can pull off. Now, I want to get down to the simplest possible nitty gritty.
So we've now just completed this build and it actually came out a lot better than expected. And we've got 2.6 gigahertz out of the box with no tuning on 18 cores, 36 threads. And we're running a Cinebench R23 now for roughly 10 minutes just to quickly test stability and temperatures and make sure the motherboard can hold up, the CPU can hold up, as well as the RAM and everything else. And this build, it was actually surprisingly pretty easy considering the case was never really designed to harbor such beastly futuristic hardware because <laughs> even though the motherboard and CPU and stuff like that was around the 2015 era, the case is 10 years prior to that from 2005 and you may notice this crazy little lcd screen at the front this is actually a really missed and cool feature that i don't see on many cases nowadays and we've got the ability to set the time and monitor four different temperatures on our cpu video card hard drive and also a case however since the case is over 15 years old unfortunately the cpu sensor isn't working properly but the other sensors will give us uh, warnings and they can set off alarms when certain temperatures reach a threshold which you can set manually on this front panel here so it can give you some little alarms and they can go off and that is very handy especially on a workstation you can also monitor fan rpm speeds if you run it through the front hub and that will then show you what the fans are running at. However, since we've got our graphics cards hooked up to their own unique proprietary connectors, it's going to be a little bit difficult to do it on this particular build. The last little problem we ran into is the side panel here. Unfortunately, it won't fit on properly due to the radiator and the fan on the inside blocking it from mounting properly. And it is a shame because it is a 20 centimeter fan. It's very quiet does have really good airflow and these temperatures are already looking like they're very impressive but from here on in we're going to run a heap of different benchmarks for you guys get you some scores so if you want to get something or build something similar to this you'll have an idea of how it performs and also in part two we'll then start tuning up the whole build and see what are the maximum scores we can extract out of this CPU and GPU combo. We've now got some preliminary benchmarks for you guys, which I'll pull up on the screen. The first being the video editing 4K Premiere Pro render. So I recently did the parts hunt last month, the end of September, and that was about a 15 and a half minute video. And the main rig that I use for video editing, that's an 18 core 36 thread, 10980XE. And I got 128 gigabytes of RAM, RTX 3080. It's got all the latest and greatest stuff, all made to cut down time and make the work as efficient as possible. And we got on this rig eight minutes and 27 seconds for this render. And also using, going through the timeline, it's pretty smooth. The whole rig is tuned, 4.4 gigahertz on 18 uh, cores, all overclocked. And the GPU has been tweaked in terms of undervolting to get the most out of the power consumption and efficiency. But when we move over now to this rig right behind me with the 1080Ti, I'm just blown away. I mean, we got 10 minutes and 24 seconds for this final render. But I was surprised to see that maybe it's just recent updates on Premiere Pro, but it looks like the GPU is definitely starting to take more of the brunt than it ever has in that updates have made it essentially putting the load off the CPU onto the GPU. And that difference of eight minutes and 27 seconds versus 10 minutes and 24 seconds on a rig that costs literally under a quarter of the price, if not even less. I mean, for what I put this thing together for, it would be probably <laughs> one sixth of the price of the main rig that I use. We're only getting a 25% increase in wait times. So in other words, we're getting so much better value out of going with this 18 core 36 thread Xeon system with a 1080 Ti 
versus the RTX 3080 system with the latest and greatest 10980XE and 128 gigabytes of RAM. So that was the first thing that blew me away. And in fact, I'm actually gonna trial using this thing after we tune it in the next video as my main rig. Just give it a go, give it a crack and see what you're really missing out on. Cause I was so far so good. I was really impressed with what this CPU has to offer, but we'll talk about why this CPU can be very impressive for certain situations after the gaming numbers, which these were equally as impressive. Uh, F1 2020 at 1080p max settings, 155 FPS and a 0.1% uh, low of 109. And we got a 1% low of 122. And then we move over to CSGO, we got 289 average FPS and pretty good 1% and 0.1% lows. Dota 2 was the same story with 177 average FPS and 1% and point of lows were pretty solid considering I've done a lot of tests in Dota 2 and CSGO and I've seen the numbers. And then the last game we've got is Apex Legends and this was some of the best FPS numbers I've seen in terms of 1% and 0.1% lows where we're getting 141 for 1% lows, 192 average FPS and then 132 for the 0.1% lows. So extremely smooth the whole time. I was just impressed with what this CPU was delivering. And it seems like the games, especially CSGO and Dota 2, they definitely have taken advantage of optimization for more cores and more threads. Where I seeing this CPU at its current state, after we tune it, it should go a bit higher, but at its current state, it's getting about 2.8 gigahertz all cores in games. And then when it came to the Cinebench R23, it was going 2.6 gigahertz on all those 18 cores, 36 threads. But the last benchmark we've got for you guys is the Firestrike Extreme, where this will test out the GPU, the CPU, and give you a combined score. And here we get physics over 19,000. The GPU score is over 14,000. So very solid numbers, especially with that 1080 Ti. It's got a lot of raw grunt in the tank beating some of even the latest and greatest 6600 XTs and, and 3060 Ti's in this benchmark. But now back to the E5 2699V3 and why it's so unique and one of the most interesting points about this CPU is not only its current $200 price point, but also the fact that it's got some of the biggest level three cash you'll ever see on the CPU for retail, coupled in with the fact that it's also ring bus and ring bus essentially in the past has only been given to consumers in 10 cores uh, eight cores i think the uh, 10900k was one of the biggest retail ring bus cpus you saw released on mainstream where that was of course 10 cores 20 threads this having 18 cores 36 threads of ring bus is nothing to laugh at and that coupled with a massive level 3 cache buffer really means that you'll get some of the smoothest numbers you'll see in games and that's what i was seeing here today i was blown away by how smooth it was and also how well it did in applications like premiere pro and also on top of that we've got the quad channel memory which even though the speeds are slower in today's tests we only tested at 21 33 megahertz even then we couple that in quad channel and it's practically like having in terms of bandwidth dual channel to 4266 megahertz <laughs> had to stop and have a quick think about that one anyway guys that's it for part one do stay tuned for part two where we're going to be going a little bit more in depth with this build we're going to be tuning it we're going to be putting on a custom bias trying to up the speed of those 18 cores 36 threads as well as try do some memory tuning and of course maximize the efficiency of the gpu then we'll come back to today's numbers and see what the difference is but on that note i was just simply blown away by the value for money you are getting with this cpu at this point in time though one more thing that we will touch on in the upcoming videos around this cpu is you will have to focus on getting a good x99 motherboard if you want to make the 18 core 36 thread work i wouldn't go with a too cheap of a board especially some of the aliexpress generic boards but i would assume that some of the motherboards with perhaps better vrms and a vrm cooling solution could perhaps handle the 18 core 36 threaded cpu without setting you back too much money and so on that note alone this makes a phenomenal 
hybrid video workstation and gaming PC on a budget. And we're not talking basic video editing, this is high-end 4K video editing. This thing will be able to handle it at only a fraction of the price at what you'd pay for some higher-end setups. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and also let us know in the comments what do you think about the E5 2699V3. Me personally, I'm blown away by the CPU. It's actually brought a big smile to my face, something that 2021, unfortunately, hasn't been able to do a whole lot. It's been probably the least amount of smiles in my life in this year, but that aside, we've got the question of the day. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, and it comes from Gurkov Wolf, and they ask, what are the odds my DX79TO can support a 2680V2? So with this Intel motherboard, the DX is a Intel X79 motherboard, I would assume it should be able to support those Xeons since they release the microcode in a mass bundle and they generally integrate them into the BIOS updates. Though I wouldn't be 100% as I haven't tried that combo personally. So I did a little bit more digging after I made this video and apparently Intel never offered the microcode update via a BIOS update for that selective motherboard, which to be honest is pretty pathetic. <laughs> so this is probably why Intel stopped making motherboards altogether. So the blunt answer is no, the V2 Xeons won't work with the DX79TO motherboard, only the V1 and the 3000 series Sandy Bridge X79 CPUs will. Hope that answers that question. And if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech Yes content, then you know what to do. Hit that sub, ring the bell for the content as soon as it drops, and I'll catch you in another Tech Yes very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.